Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you the easiest way to take some JavaScript data and convert it into CSV. Now, uh, you know, I'm going to be showing you how to convert it into a string, um, but also a downloadable file, which I'm sure most of you probably want. Um, but if you were interested in taking an HTML table and converting it into CSV, I've got a video on that, which I'll be leaving in the top right corner of this video if you're interested. But if not, definitely stick around to watch this video instead. So let me show you how to do it. Okay, so when it comes to doing something quickly in JavaScript, it most likely requires the use of a library. So we're going to be using an excellent library in today's video called JSON to CSV, which is going to make it easier for us to, of course, create those CSV strings and files in JavaScript. But don't worry because this library is easy to use and you can include it in existing projects or websites by simply including a script tag. So uh, we have data just like this. It's an array of objects. I assume you guys have a similar situation on your existing project. Now, all of these objects have the same properties on them, ID, username, and age. So if you have a similar situation right here, it's going to be very straightforward to create those CSV strings and downloadable files. I'm going to be showing you both in this video. So first step is going to be to include that library on the HTML. Let's go inside the browser right here. And I'm going to be leaving a link to this page down below for you to click on. Once you've opened that link, you'll be taken here to the JSON to CSV package page. Now, to include this on your own website, simply take the script tag right here, copy it and paste it at the end of your body. Okay, right before your main script where your data is. Okay, so now we have the library installed. How do we create some CSV? Well, very, very straightforward. Let's hop down here and make a new constant called CSV data equal to then simply say JSON to CSV dot parse. Calling the parse function on its own, just like this one liner, is going to do the job for us. Let's now say data, or let's pass in the data into the parse function, and we're done. We can now console.log the CSV data, save this, go in the browser, go inside my index HTML here. I'll refresh, check the console, and we have the CSV right there. As we can see, it's included headers by default. I'll show you how to turn those off, but it's taken the ID, username, and age from the JS sorry from the JavaScript objects and included them in the header. It's also wrapped the strings in double quotes to ensure um, if your data contains a comma that's actually part of the data and not a separator, you should be fine. So it you know, covers those situations where you might have a comma or something like that. Now, that's a benefit of using a library, right? Because if you were to try and create your own CSV uh, you know, converter, you might miss those crucial things such as that comma that the library is most likely going to take care of for you. All right, so that right there is the first step, creating that you know, CSV string, right? But I want to show you real quickly before the file download part, how you can provide some options. So if you want to provide some options and customize that output, we'll scroll down here, go down to the options section under the JavaScript module part, and you have these available options. So for example, you can provide your own fields instead of it being taken from the uh, properties. You can provide a custom delimiter if you don't want the comma by default. You can use a tab or a space and so on. You can also provide a true or false for the header row. So let's do that right now. I'll go back inside here. I'll now say for the parse function, put a comma and provide a object. Now, this object is the options, all right? So I'll say header is false. And remember, this header false came from documentation right up here, which says header boolean true or false. So saying header false, go back in the browser, refresh, and we no longer get that header row at the top. So feel free to explore these options and do something that works for you. All right, so how do we make this CSV file downloadable? Very straightforward, and I'm going to be showing you how to do it using a button. So 
uh, we're gonna allow your users to press download CSV and it's gonna download that file to the computer. So going back inside the index HTML, I just want to remove the example code which we just wrote. So I'll backspace that. Then go up to the top of the body. Now, let's include a new button right here with a type of button and an ID of BTN download CSV, just like that. The label is gonna be download CSV. So, got this button, let's now go back in the JavaScript down below and get a reference to that button, okay? We can say const BTN download CSV equal to document.gets elements by ID, passing through here, BTN download CSV. So now, of course, we can do things like attach event listeners so we can make it so when the user clicks on the button, we can download the file. But before doing that, we need to make a function in JavaScript which lets us programmatically download a file to the user's PC. Now, this technique is very common. You'll find it online in many different places, but it involves a function called download, something like this. Then it takes in two arguments. You've got a file name and the actual data to download. So in our case here, we can call this parameter CSV data. We can also call this function download CSV to be a little bit more specific, um, but that's fine. So download CSV. What does this function do? How does it download to the PC? Well, it involves creating an anchor tag. So just like normal links work in JavaScript, you can actually uh, make those links or those anchor tags download some simple text data for you. Okay, so let's create a new constant here called element equal to document.createElement here. Create a new anchor tag programmatically. Then hop down here, we'll say element.set attribute. Let's set the href attribute of this anchor to be a template string. So using the back ticks near the one on your keyboard, template strings here. Then just say simply uh, data colon, then text forward slash uh, CSV. Then say semicolon uh, character set equal to UTF-8. Now, what's happening here? Well, we're saying, look, this anchor tag, the href, okay, it's not a URL. Instead, it's a data colon, which just means this right here is some data. Now, the content type or the MIME type is text forward slash CSV. That is the MIME type for CSV. Then, of course, the character set, UTF-8, very common and most likely in your case. Then we just say comma, okay? After the comma, we specify the data. Let's use dollar sign and then curly brackets. Of course, uh, this is possible due to the back ticks, you know, around the string. Then we just say CSV data inside here. So providing that CSV string, okay? Let's now say new line or, you know, duplicate that line. Set attribute file, sorry, my mistake, <laughs> download. So setting the download attribute equal to the file name just means, look, um, this is downloadable and the file name to download is gonna be whatever you pass in. Okay, let's pause right here and take a look at what this actually does. So let's say document.body.append child appends that element. I'll save this, go back in the browser here, refresh. I'll now say download CSV. I'll say decode uh, dash test dot CSV. The data can simply be something like a header one, header two, just an example, right? I'll press enter. If we now check the elements, so in the body, we have this anchor tag. The href is set to data text CSV character set, and we have our CSV data at the end here. Header one, header two, right? Download decode test.csv. So that's what's happening, right? We have this anchor tag. This allows us to then download to the file, sorry, to the machine, right? So how do we do that? Well, let's programmatically click that button in JavaScript. Let's say, elements.click, okay. Save this back in the browser, refresh, run this function once again, and it downloads it, just like that. I'll open it up, and you can see here, header one, header two.
That's all it is. But it's still here in the elements. So let's just remove that and also make sure that it doesn't display to the user. So back in here, we can also say elements.style.display equal to none to make sure it's hidden always. Then just say once it's been clicked on elements.body.remove child and pass in that element just like that. I'll save this back in the browser, refresh once again, try it again, download CSV and it's broken. Let's figure out why. Okay, my mistake, document.body.remove child, not just element. So that's fine. Let's try again, refresh, do it, and it still works perfectly fine. So it's now gone from the element section right here and we're good to go. So let's now call this function from the event listener. Also, the source code for this is gonna be linked down below. So if you want to copy this code or reference it, you can do so by downloading it, like I said, down below. So how do we now, of course, react to the events of the click on the button? Very straightforward, btn download csv .add event listener. Listen for the click event. When the user clicks on the button, we're gonna simply call that download csv. We'll say here, download csv. The file name is gonna be decode-test.csv here. Now, I'm sure that you would probably make this a variable and it would come from somewhere else, like an input field or you know something like that. But the point is, just an example here, like I said, you guys can obviously uh, make that come from somewhere else. Now, in terms of the data, well, once again, you know, same situation. You probably want the data to come from somewhere else, so um, I'll let you guys work that out. But for me, I'm gonna simply call here json 2 csvparse and pass in that data once again, just like last time. Um, and now if I save this, go back in the browser, refresh here, press download CSV in the top left corner, it downloads that file, I'll click on it, and we are done. So it's downloaded that CSV. And that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.